Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And to the members of the class of 2026, parents, friends, loved ones, our esteemed faculty and staff, welcome to the white coat ceremony. I'm Jen Van Amberg. I'm a clinical faculty member and the assistant dean in the Office of Student Affairs in the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. And I have the honor and privilege of working with these students in celebrating this major accomplishment. The white coat ceremony symbolizes the passage into the initial, initial stages of the profession of pharmacy, from your pre-science coursework into the more advanced coursework. Pharmaceutical sciences, yes, your social administrative sciences, and clinical pharmacy sciences. The white coat is a symbol that represents the virtues of commitment to excellence, accountability, initiative, responsibility, compassion and respect for others, integrity and trustworthiness, teamwork, and the concern of the welfare for patients and altruism. You are bound by the same professional commitments that bind all pharmacists, the core values of our code of professional conduct. It is one of the most important milestones in your career as it celebrates all the hard work you've completed to this point. Embrace this moment. Reflect on why you have chosen this career and remember this throughout your pharmacy education journey. Last year, we started a new tradition of asking our alumni community to sponsor our white coat as a mechanism to foster an early connection between our students and our alumni. This year, we expanded it to our entire social media community and we received sponsorship from parents, faculty, and staff. And I am thrilled to share that 70% of our white coats are sponsored and a personal message can be found in the top pocket of your coat. You've now been connected to another member of our community and will continue to foster these relationships and encourage you to build more. That is one of the amazing things about our program, the relationships you will form in your class and the program with your faculty and staff and with the larger pharmacy community through your introductory, also called your co-ops, and advanced pharmacy practice experiences. As you continue your journey, remember this moment of the generosity of others and the sponsorship of your white coat and how your generosity could impact others. Please join me in applause to thank and recognize the sponsors of the coats. At this time, I'd like to welcome Dean Tatiana Bronich to provide remarks. Dean Bronich? Good morning, once again, on behalf of faculty, administration, staff, students, alumni, and friends of the Northeastern University Bouvet College of Health Sciences, School of Pharmacy, and Pharmaceutical Sciences, I welcome each of you to the White Coat Ceremony for the Class of 2026. I have the privilege of serving as a dean of the school, and I also would like to offer greetings and congratulations on behalf of our president, Joseph Aoun Provost, David Madigan, and Bouvet College Dean, Carmen Shepa. It is great to have you here at this ceremony where we recognize our amazing student. We are proud and thrilled that we gathered here to celebrate the beginning of new chapter in the life of each student in this room. So we celebrate the individual paths that you have taken to come here, including all the bumps, wrong turns, and lessons you have learned along the way. We celebrate the impact of the families, friends, and loved ones who help student pharmacists reach this milestone in their professional journey. 
we celebrate the relationship that you formed and the growth that happens over the course of your pharmacy education. We celebrate your future patients that you will take care of who will be provided with the best patient care. We celebrate the professional journey that you all have started and unique paths that each of you will take as you develop into health care professional. We celebrate all of you for hard work and making it to this moment. To underscore what Dr. Van Amber shared with you, today each of you will be coated with a white coat. This very simple coat is at the same time is symbolic. It represents professionalism, caring, and trust that each of you must earn from your uh, patients and interprofessional colleagues you will be working with. At the same time, it's also a huge responsibility. As you work across the stage to be coated with your white coat, think what it means and how you as student pharmacists can begin to build the skills needed to be a professional, caring and trustworthy healthcare provider. As a student pharmacist, we want you to strive every day to embrace the knowledge, skills, behaviors and attitudes needed so you can become the very best health care providers you can possibly be. We guarantee you if you do your very best every day and fully immerse yourself in this educational journey, you will develop into the excellent health care professional. As Dean, I always want you to understand our commitment to your success and be aware that you have a support and backing of our highly engaged faculty, staff, alumni, and friends. They will help you to become a better version of who you are today. The School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences has been training, preparing pharmacists over 60 years. We are incredibly fortunate to be part of the next chapter of excellence, and you should be proud to be sitting where you are today. It is a testimony of who you are to your commitment and your willingness to grow. Thank you for your hard work and your commitment to this program and to becoming those excellent pharmacists that we do need. I would like to say that some people in our professional community stand out among others as role models for students. And we are fortunate to have a very accomplished leader to speak with you today. This is my pleasure to introduce you to our guest, Dr. Maria Lowe. Dr. Maria Lowe is a 2008 PharmD graduate uh, from the program. Upon graduation, she completed a two-year fellowship in health outcome research and pharmacoeconomics at the University of Massachusetts Medical School's Clinical Pharmacy Services, then continued that work for the next three years as a clinical consultant Pharmacist. She also became a board certified pharmacotherapy specialist. In 2013, she joined Patient Like Me, a patient powered research network. It is a platform where patients were able to track their health and connect with the other patients like themselves. The data that patients donated on the platform was used to inform research on the patient experience with numerous diseases, symptoms, and treatments. In 2019, 
uh, Dr. Lowe transitioned to the Institute for Clinical and Economic Review as the Director of Pharmaceutical Intelligence. In this role, she is responsible for tracking developments in the drug pipeline to invite the Institute team on potential topics of interest worthy of considering for comparative and cost effectiveness evaluation. Since 2009, you know, she has been invited to serve as an annual guest speaker about drugs in development at a variety of local and national conferences. In her free personal life, Dr. Lowe is an amateur artist, and during the pandemic, she launched her own illustration and sternary design business. So more recently, she has started uh, book binding and loves making her own sketchbooks uh, uh, filled with her artistic created. You will never find her without at least one book, today probably an exception, um, and a handful of pen in, um, you know, with her, just in case that there is a chance uh, for her to be able to make a quick sketch. Dr. Lowe is fascinated by the um, collective nouns and one day hopes to illustrate a children's book around them. So she and her husband, whom she met at Northeastern, reside in Jamaica Plain, and have a love for traveling, so they hope to one day visit all 50 states and all 63 national park, uh, parks. Please welcome Dr. Lowe. It really sounds much fancier when you hear somebody else read off all of your most impressive achievements. Um, I think it's such a great feeling to have your bio and this polished version of yourself shared on your behalf before getting an opportunity like this. But I think that beautifully polished version of my bio doesn't tell you the whole story. It doesn't tell you how all of those most impressive bits that I've carefully selected actually came to be. And it doesn't tell you about all of the things that happened behind the scenes in terms of the lessons I learned, the challenges I faced, and the decisions that I had to make along the way. So that polished version of my professional and personal self might seem a little out of reach for folks like yourself sitting here this morning. Maybe it feels a little sterile and hard to understand how you get from here to there. So I'm gonna tell you the unpolished version of my story, the longer version, the version that I would title, What on Earth Am I Going to Do Now? Or How I Turned an Assignment I Didn't Want, a Laid Off Fellowship Director, and an Employer's Financial Difficulty into my dream job. Maybe by telling you this version, the unpolished version, I can humanize the path that you might follow to develop your own career and show you how not that long ago, I was just like you, sitting where you are and struggling with some of the same decisions that I'm sure you're thinking about right now. So just like you, I started as a student here at Northeastern School of Pharmacy. And as a student, I was really eager to do everything right and, and tick all of the boxes. I got good grades, I studied really, really hard. I was active in numerous student organizations. I worked part-time, sometimes at more than one job. I did everything that I was supposed to do to build myself a strong resume and set myself up for professional success. So naturally, when it came time to decide what I was gonna do after I graduated and start planning my professional life, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted, not a single clue. I knew that postgraduate training was a really good next step, and at the time, two of the most popular options were fellowships in the pharmaceutical industry or clinical residencies. I knew that I wasn't interested in an industry fellowship. I wasn't really a fan of drug companies, and there was something about the way they approached 
drug prices that just didn't sit well with me. So we can cross industry fellowships off of my list. Clinical pharmacy felt like a solid choice, but I hadn't worked in a clinical setting yet. So when it was time for my first clinical rotation during my sixth year, I was so excited. I would be working on an infectious disease team at a local hospital, and I couldn't wait to get started. And lucky for me, that rotation really changed everything. It was terrible. The professor was great, and I learned a ton, but I learned I did not like working in a clinical environment. It just wasn't for me. So now I've crossed a clinical PGY-1 off of my list. I'd ruled out the two most popular postgraduate training options at the time, and I was feeling a little lost. But I didn't let it get in my way. I kept searching, I didn't give up, and ultimately I found a more non-traditional path. I found a two-year fellowship in health outcomes research and pharmacoeconomics within the setting of a managed care company. I loved my pharmacoeconomics class when I was here, and while I didn't really know much about managed care, what I learned seemed really interesting, and this felt like a perfect fit. So off I went to start my fellowship, and one of the very first assignments that I was given was to find a way to track drugs in late stages of development such that I could produce a newsletter to educate our staff and our clients about potential near-term FDA approvals to expect in the months to come. It was a hugely time-consuming project that had nothing to do with pharmacoeconomics or health outcomes research. I was a little disappointed that I was gonna be spending so much of my time on something that didn't feel like it matched the reason why I was there. But I kept my head down, I kept at it, and I worked really hard, as hard as I could, on this assignment. And before you knew it, I was actually invited to give a continuing education program about drugs and development. And it turned out I was kind of okay at public speaking. So that one continuing ed program opened up doors for others, and I received more invitations to speak about drugs and development in front of a range of different audiences. It still had nothing to do with pharmacoeconomics or health outcomes research, and I still wasn't in love with it, but I knew the speaking engagements were a great opportunity to practice my presenting skills, to network, and to help get my name out there. So fast forward to the beginning of my second year of my fellowship, and my company was restructured. And unfortunately, as part of that restructuring, my fellowship director, and the only other pharmacist on my team trained in health outcomes and pharmacoeconomics research was laid off. Suddenly, I was the senior member of our health outcomes research team, and it was up to me to take control of the rest of my fellowship training and the training of the first-year fellow that had entered the program behind me. I did what I could to continue learning, but I never really developed the confidence that I assumed would come with a longer period of training with a qualified mentor. But again, I kept at it. I finished my second year and helped the fellow behind me complete his two years. He opted to pursue a career in health informatics at patients like me, and I stayed on at the managed care company, working on simple research projects and basic economic models. But managed care was a tough environment to be doing this kind of research. We didn't always have access to the data that we needed to do the research we wanted. So after five years, I decided to try my hand at doing research in a different setting. I leveraged my network, and I decided to join my co-fellow at the health data integrity team at Patients Like Me. And as we just heard, Patients Like Me was focused on researching the patient experience about living with disease using data that patients shared with us directly. During my six years there, I was able to learn about health informatics and inform the design of countless research studies. And throughout this time, the invites to speak about drugs in development kept coming in. I became a regular speaker at events hosted by the American Drug Utilization Review Society, the Massachusetts Pharmacists Association, and others. And before I realized it, 
I had become a specialist in drugs and development, and my recognition as such was starting to grow. But sadly, another curveball was thrown my way in 2019 when patients like me encountered financial difficulty. So here I was trying to figure out my next step. It was time to find a new job again. And again, I had no idea what I was gonna do next. I had always been interested in the work of a small company known as the Institute for Clinical and Economic Review. They were doing incredible things with pharmacoeconomics research to help hold the pharmaceutical industry accountable for rising drug prices. But with my fellowship training being cut short the way that it had, I was never brave enough to apply. I didn't have the confidence that I felt I needed to call myself a health economist. I didn't think that I had what it would take to do the research that they were doing. That is, until I saw that they needed someone to help them monitor the drug pipeline to inform their decisions about what emerging drugs they should evaluate. Here was a job that required the exact combination of skills that I had accumulated in my career thus far. Expertise in the drug pipeline, an understanding of how payers craft drug policy, and an understanding of how pharmacoeconomics could factor in to all of that. I had all of these things, and it was perfect. And so my time as the Director of Pharmaceutical Intelligence at the Institute for Clinical and Economic Review began. So why am I telling you this? You heard my bio. I'm not telling you this to stress how cool my title is, even though I think my title is pretty cool. I'm sure you can agree. I'm telling you this story to impress upon you that you don't have to have it all figured out right now. It's okay if you wanna take your time and take things one step as they come. I know it feels like you have to have all the answers and a whole plan from today forward, but I promise you, you don't. I didn't. I took it one step at a time, and I'm so thrilled with where I landed. Your career path doesn't have to be a straight line. I went from managed care to digital health to health technology appraisal, a path that might have appeared scattered, but to me it felt purposeful as I developed my skills, fine-tuned my interest, solidified my values, and adapted to the challenges that came across my path. Your career path doesn't have to have one single destination. In fact, I hope it has multiple destinations. Destinations that keep you focused on the future, that drive you to work hard, keep moving forward, and to set and reach new goals. You also don't need to know where that destination might be. And maybe you shouldn't know. The field of pharmacy is constantly evolving, and our healthcare system in the US is incredibly complex. That means that there are new opportunities and new solutions being developed to healthcare's problems every single day. There could be a role for you in this field that hasn't even been imagined yet. I'm the director of pharmaceutical intelligence at a health technology appraisal company. I would never have known how to even describe that kind of role when I was sitting where you are. I'd love to also tell my students that a career is a very long time. You have so much time to figure it all out. And I'm not saying that you can just kick back and relax and assume that the perfect career is going to just present itself to you but I am saying that it's okay to figure it out as you go. Dedicate yourself to being a student of your own experiences and stay curious. Ask yourself what you can learn every single day because one of the best ways that we learn is by doing. Every experience you have provides the chance to learn something new or develop yourself as a professional. Look for what you're learning in every task that you complete even if all that you learn is, wow, I don't really like doing this one particular thing. If you approach your work with curiosity, even the challenging parts or the assignments that you might not like at first, even those experiences might start to feel more like fulfilling learning opportunities. Try different things, learn when you can, and cultivate and pursue your strengths. 
see what specialties and other interests develop along the way, and be honest with yourself and reflecting on those experiences. Be honest about what has worked well and what hasn't worked so well, and just adjust your plans as needed. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. Find those co-ops and rotations and projects that will challenge you. Don't shy away from taking an unfamiliar path and instead try to push yourself to experience new things because sometimes the way that we learn best is when we're uncomfortable. Build the relationships with each other and with your colleagues in the field. There really is truth to the saying that sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. So make sure that you create connections with your classmates, with your professors, with your preceptors, because you never know when you might want to lean on one of them for advice or guidance. And most importantly, don't lose sight of the words that you're going to speak today and the reasons why we're all here. We're all part of a very special group of professionals. We're more than just doctors of pharmacy. We get to call ourselves pharmacists. And the words you'll speak today are going to help tell you exactly what that means. It means that we get to be advocates for health and health equity. We get to be experts in drug therapy and trusted healthcare professionals. And we get to champion the use of evidence-based medicine. We're lifelong learners and we're mentors. And we are so fortunate to be part of this profession that allows us to serve patients in more ways than we can count. So I encourage you to reflect on the words of the oath that you're about to speak and carry those words with you in the years to come. I think you'll find that if you keep those words close, you're bound to be making career decisions that will lead to a fulfilling path and something that you'll be proud of. So today, we celebrate the start of your professional journey, but remember that it's only the start of that journey. I can't wait to see what steps you take next, and I just want to remind you that from here on out, no matter how many steps you take at once, and no matter where those steps take you in your career, you're not walking alone. We're all walking together and figuring things out one step at a time. Congratulations on this exciting occasion, and thank you so much for letting me be a part of your beginning. So, Dr. Lowe, thank you for sharing your journey with us and your inspirational remarks. And on behalf of School of Pharmacy, and Pharmaceutical Sciences at Northeastern University, we would like to present you with this small talking of our gratitude and appreciation. So now is when you guys have to get active. Are you ready? All right, so we'll be going to beginning the coding ceremony. I'd like to invite to the stage, to the front of the stage actually, because they're already here, uh, my colleagues, Drs. Jack Reynolds, Dr. Maria Lowe, and Jason Lancaster to please come to the front of the stage. Dr. Tatiana, you'll proceed. And I kindly ask our family and friends to keep and save your applause until after the group of students have been coded and then when, before they leave the stage. So can I please ask our ambassadors?
Dio Akinpulu, Zane Ayers, Leah Bananowitz. Shadi Moebi, Katrina Block, Karina Bridgelaw. Julia Burke, Ethan Chan, Boru Chen. <laughs> Allison Chung, Charlotte Choi, Evan Corbett. Diana Corona Perez, Bridget Ehrig. <laughs> Sophie Friedman, Ileana Grulon, Jihee Christine Han. <laughs> Leah Hoffman, Madison Hubert, Eugene Wang. John Pallor Canoe, Stella Kim, Sean Kim. Jeremy Kim, Jung Hun Kim, Niyu Selena Kim. <laughs> Yuk Young Ellie Kim. Susie Kim, Abigail Kunzi. <laughs> Lauren Ku, Latifa Lawal. Young Sue Alice Lee.
I'll now invite our other three faculty, Dr. Nashiel Desai, Alexa Carlson, Brandon Dione. Jane Lee, Youngju Sophia Lee, <laughs> Esther Lim, Crystal Lynn. Fabia Navali Mahmood. <laughs> Ethan Men, Christopher O. Oh. Astrid O'Cherry, Sung Young Park, Nicole Park. Alessandro Sipson Pudu, Jenna Pooley, Lauren Roth. <laughs> Sophia, Sophia Rajir, Claire Rousseau, Sarika Satasha Kumar. <laughs> Natalia Sloma, Olivia Sung, Michaela Ta. Julia Tan, Gary Tang, Bryn Thomas. <laughs> Allison Sa, Hannah Venturini, Victoria Walsh. Lam Wong, Lauren Yi, Junho Yoon. <laughs> Tina Zeng, Shunfei Zhao.
So it's going to be this weird pause for a moment. Congratulations, class of 2026. I'm going to now ask that you please stand up, turn around. We may need to turn the lights up. We're going to wait for the photographer to take our class of 2026 photo. He's heading up the stage right now, but we might need to turn on the auditorium lights for this, please. Family, friends, if you want to take a quick photo, here's your time. All right, everybody, smile. So good morning, everyone. I am Deb Copeland. I am an assistant clinical professor, but I am also the assistant dean for experiential and continuing professional education here at the school. What that actually translates into is I and several additional uh, faculty members are managing 30% of the experiential curriculum. And additionally, we are also managing the pharmacist continuing education that occurs once all of you have graduated and are out beyond one year. I'm excited today to be here to introduce Dr. Tim Fouché. He is a 2011 graduate of our program and a pharmacy manager at the New England Baptist Hospital. He is the recipient of the Introductory Pharmacy Practice Experience Preceptor of the Year Award. The award recognizes preceptors who deliver experiences in our experiential curriculum through the cooperative education model. Cooperative education introduces our students to the roles and responsibilities of being a pharmacist. This year, because of the extraordinary efforts of all of our preceptors during the pandemic, the school decided that we would recognize all co-op preceptors and when I thought of one introductory experience preceptor that would be able to adequately represent everyone, Tim immediately came to mind. I picked up the phone, he answered my call, and said, yes, I'll be more than happy to come and be part of this wonderful ceremony. Tim has been at New England Baptist for a number of years and has been an outstanding member of our community. The criteria for precepting excellence includes role model practitioner, effective teacher, encourages self-directed learning. Comments that students provided about the experience Tim offers includes, make students feel welcome and easy transition into the co-op experience. Our preceptor was very flexible and always understanding. Dr. Fouché communicates effectively, is accessible, friendly, and competent in his job, always while helping the students. Besides being a good pharmacist, he always provided an outstanding learning environment. Please join me in welcoming Tim to the, the podium so that he can lead all of you with the oath of the pharmacy intern. Thank you. Please stand up. Um, so, in your right bottom pocket, uh, you'll find the oath, so you can take that out, and you're going to repeat the portion that I read out loud after me. Um, so, please raise your right hand. At this time, I promise to devote myself to my pharmacy education. Go ahead. <laughs> and a lifetime of service to others. 
through the profession of pharmacy. In fulfilling this vow, I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns at work and experiential sites. I will promote inclusion, embrace diversity, and advocate for justice to advance health equity. I will apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for all patients. I will respect and protect all personal and health information entrusted to me. I will accept the responsibility to improve my professional knowledge, expertise, and self-awareness. I will hold myself and my colleagues to the highest principles of our profession's moral, ethical, and legal conduct. I will be receptive to and respectful of the Council of Pharmacy Educators and Experiential Preceptors. I will suggest, embrace, and advocate changes that improve patient care. I will apply my knowledge, skills, experiences, and values to prepare myself as part of the next generation of pharmacists. I take these vows voluntarily with the full realization of my current and future responsibilities. On behalf of all the preceptors that I'm here representing, I wish you the best of luck uh, you know, in, in your next four years of school, and uh, enjoy your time here while you have it. Go Huskies. So we need you just one last time, because on behalf of the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, we would like to present you with this gift in appreciation and gratitude for your commitment to our students and our program. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So please be seated. So I would like to uh, start that with the thanks and uh, all, to thank all individuals who planned and executed this wonderful event, especially the Office of Student Affair, led by Dr. Van Amber, faculty and staff who assisted. We are grateful to School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences alumni and friends Northeastern University Pharmacy Student Alliance, Student Ambassadors, and P4 students. And thank you again to all our faculty and staff in attendance. All your efforts have been greatly, greatly appreciated. <laughs> to the class, of 2026. You just started an excited new phase in your life, in your personal and professional development. All of us gathered today wish success, wish you success in meeting the challenges ahead of you and look forward to seeing you receive your Doctor of Pharmacy hood on this stage four years from now. <laughs> it's a little bit too soon. 
So think broadly about where to take your career and do not hesitate to start now. The PharmD degrees give you a perfect platform for exploring a variety of career options, including patient care, of course, research, business, leadership, teaching, and more, as Dr. Lau kind of mentioned before. Our faculty, alumni, and preceptors that you will meet represent a diversity of the careers that you can pursue as future pharmacies, and they will guide you and help you to find your right path. Your family has given and will continue to give you the foundation and support for your personal growth. Your patient will teach you about compassion and the human conditions, and your classmates and colleagues will be here to support you as you progress through this rigorous program. You will be immersed in practice and it will experience real world application of your knowledge, skills, and attitudes as you take on the responsibility of caring for patients. Our commitments to you is to see all you all the way to the end, the doctoral hooding ceremony and into successful careers. You, our incoming P1 student, are impressive and already accomplished. We are proud that you will help to grow our school's strong and positive reputation. And I will close with the following. Believe in yourselves and find others who will believe in you too. Find your passion by embracing the possibility and remember why you are here and definitely enjoy your journey. I hope that all of you will be challenged and inspired to make a difference in the lives of your patients, your future practice site, the school, the college, the university, and for their profession. Congratulations and welcome to the profession of the pharmacy. Wear your white coats proudly and remember that you will be able to make a difference in the future. And now we are kindly ask uh, that family and friends to please remain in your seats until after the procession of the faculty followed by the class of 2000 26 have fully exited the auditorium. And please join us outside at the Craftsman Quad. Thank you very much.